what are temporary credentials when you're working in an organization the authentication mechanism used is most probably federated login when you join a new company the first thing that the hr does or asks the it team is that they should create your username and login and that is how you will log into your designated work laptop or desktop and most of the companies use an identity federation service like active directory federated services and you become a part of the organization and you become the federated user now there might be an aws resource that you want to use and you will tell me let's create an im user in my name and give me the credentials but you need to understand that it's not necessarily required to create an im user with your name for you to make use of the aws services yes that's right you might say what are you even saying yes let me explain this keep watching so you are a part of the federated identity service and this is the aws account and the resources that you want to use you will ask me how will i access them without having a im user and that's where we need a service that can help us with a temporary login to access the services which is security token service provided by aws or what we also call popularly as aws sts now let's understand how this works as a federated user we initiate the authentication to the adfs that is active directory federated service using the sso url that's the first step you initiate the authentication request using sso and that's the first step second if you have used sso before you know sso uses security assertion and uh, validates the credentials and sends an acknowledgement with or without a url redirection and that's what happens in the step 2 this security assertion or what we call as saml assertion is being sent to the aws sts service and we assume a role using assume role with saml api one thing that you need to remember here is the temporary security credentials created by assume role with saml can be used to make api calls to any aws service with the following exception you cannot call aws sts get federated token or get session token apis that's the whole point isn't it because it will defeat the whole purpose of the session based login it's like keeping the cat in charge of the fish so you cannot create get federated token or get session token api operations when you are working with sts next the sts service returns a set of temporary security credentials for the users who have been authenticated via a saml authentication response like we did just now and this operation here provides a mechanism for tying an uh, enterprise identity store or directory role to the role based aws access without user specific credentials or configuration and that is why you get the access but you don't need to be an im user lastly after you have received the temporary credentials the user will then have federated access to the aws services and this is what happens in most of the companies right now nobody is wasting time to create im users because every day or month people join or leave organizations they won't keep on adding or removing users that's the job of the it team that will be managed by the it team and the rest is integrated using saml sso and identity provider services and now it will be easier for us to understand the statement written above identity federation is a system of trust between two parties for the purpose of authenticating users and conveying the information needed to authorize their access to resources so it is a system of trust between two parties for the purpose and the purpose is authentication of users and conveying the information needed to authorize their access to the resources so based on the federated user or the federated login that you have you create a assertion and based on that assertion you send the request to the sts security token service and after the handshake is done you send the temporary security credentials back to the federated user and based on that based on that trust that has been formed he or she is allowed access to the aws resources and that is how we make use of the temporary security credentials to make use of the aws resources that we have and that also depends on if the permissions are allowed for that particular user or the user group or that login session and that is dependent on the session policies but don't worry about these details right now let's just see this example 
and consume the data and let's move forward. Here you must focus on the term use STS to provide trusted users the access. We are providing access to the trusted users because we have a mechanism to validate who is a trusted user. And now what AWS STS has to do is to provide the user with a temporary credential to access the services considering the fact that a role is already defined for that access. And that's a simple thing to do but it has a lot of details involved in that. Now let's see what are its differences to long term credentials. The first point that we have here is they can be configured to last for anywhere from a few minutes to several hours. Now I think this is the best way to implement a secure environment but there are other good ways but this is a very good way because you don't have to worry about a credential expiry. Secondly, after the credentials expire, AWS no longer recognizes them and or allows any kind of access from API request made with them. That's also awesome. The third one that we have here is temporary security credentials are not stored with the user but are generated dynamically and provided to the user when requested. That's the best thing, isn't it? You request for a temporary security credential, you get them. There is no need to store the credentials with the user. Now let's talk about the advantages of using temporary credentials. I think we have already discussed a lot about the advantages but still. So you don't have to distribute or embed long term AWS security credentials with an application. That's a good thing because, because that will be much easier to manage and secure as well. Second, you can provide access to your AWS resources to users without having to define an IAM identity for them. That's right. You don't need to create the IAM user but still you can provide access to the AWS resources. And last but not the least, the temporary security credentials have a limited lifetime. So they have a limited lifetime. So you don't have to rotate them or explicitly revoke them when they are no longer needed. If the credentials are not long term, so you don't have to rotate them or think about how you can encrypt them or store them or explicitly revoke them when they are no longer needed. So I hope you understand the point of having IAM users and federated users in terms of using AWS resources. We just discussed the use case where we made use of the Identity Federated Service and its integration with AWS STS to allow access for the trusted users to execute operations on AWS resources with obviously using temporary credentials. As you can see for Identity Federation, we have Enterprise Identity Federation like we used for ADFS or uh, like we discussed for ADFS or IBM. Next, we have Web Identity Federation. For this one, what AWS tells us is that with the Web Identity Federation, you don't need to create custom login or custom sign-in code uh, or manage your own user identities. Instead, users of your app can sign in using a well-known external identity provider, such as login with Amazon or you can log in with Facebook, Google or any other OpenID Connect. And at last, we have Custom Federation Broker and Federation using SAML 2.0. Here what AWS tells is that AWS supports identity federation with uh, SAML 2.0. So if you're using SAML 2.0 already, AWS supports identity federation with SAML 2.0, uh, which is an XML based protocol that uses security tokens containing assertions that help in authentication. And this feature enables federated sign-in or single sign-in. So users can log into the AWS management console or, or call the AWS API operations without you having to create an IAM user for everyone in your organization, which we already discussed in the previous example. So this is a very good thing. Next up, we have roles for AWS account or cross account access. For this, we can define user identities in one account and use those identities to access AWS resources in another account that belong to your organization. Next is roles for Amazon EC2. This can help you in the use case if your application or if you run your application on Amazon EC2 instances, and those instances need access to Amazon or AWS resources, you can provide temporary security credentials to your instances when you launch them. And this also can be done by creating roles. And last one that we have here is AWS services itself. And you can use temporary security credentials to access most AWS services. There is a list of service that you can create the roles for. And this list I'll provide or the link that I have, I'll provide it in the description below so that you can check out all the services that we have that you can create roles for and make use of them. And thanks everyone for joining in for today's session of AWS. I hope you got some of the information that you wanted. And if you haven't subscribed already, then please do so. Please comment and like the video. And uh, that really helps me a lot and helps the channel grow. 
and is a really motivating factor for me so please make sure that you subscribe it really takes a lot of work and a lot of hard work to actually bring in these videos so please make sure that you support the channel by subscribing and liking the video so i'll meet you in the next session of aws stay safe stay healthy it's pytholic signing off